Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session. Um, can, you, can you hear me well uh, over there? Perfect. Thank you. So I'm going to uh, share this session with uh, my colleagues Josie and Alexander. And we do bring, uh, oh, by the way, I'm Andrea no, from, from uh, the Joint Research Center. And we do bring different perspectives to, to open education. I think the perspective that I'll bring is more um, of an overview at the policy level uh, with the work we are doing now with ministries. And then, as, as I understand, Jose will bring more um, the practitioner's perspective, the one that is there at the universities dealing with the day-to-day -day, uh, activities on open education. And Alexander here um, will kind of intermediate these two words, bringing the student perspective. No? So we're kind of going from top down, having everyone's perce perceptions and experiences being shared here on open education. So I hope that works this way. And it seems to me that, Alexander, your role is also to prompt questions, you know, to help us bridge this interface between policy and practice, right, with the student's world, okay? Great, so I think uh, we've decided that we would speak for about 15, 20 minutes and then open for questions. Uh, but maybe uh, maybe could have questions and if there are crucial questions towards the end of each presentation and then we have an opening final plenary session okay, with questions. The other thing is that I want to do an exercise with you. How many of you are on Twitter, have access to Twitter? Excellent. So I wanted to ask two questions during my presentation. I would really appreciate if you could share your views on Twitter, okay? I've also asked one of them public to everybody with the hashtag, and I know I'm looking forward to see if there is any answer. Anyone who wants to push themselves forward to, to reply to that. The first question is, what is open education for you? Okay, what's your view? How do you see it? And, and just to say from the beginning, there is no right or wrong answer, okay? It's just to share views. And the other one is, what is a policy? in this field of open education, because when we start about talking about policies, the views differ quite a lot, okay? And then at the end, we have a look at those things. So let's see if we have the time um, to do that. And I would also ask you to please use also my, my username in there, um, at AI Santos, okay? Right, so the Joint Research Center, I think most of you know us, I'm starting now, um, is the in-house science service of the European Commission, okay? We are based in Spain, uh, we are not in Brussels, many people ask where we are. Um, we do not make policies, okay? but we are kind of an interface between what happens in practice and the policy world within the Commission. So we carry out research in order to uh, help and support policymakers, both at the European level, at the European Commission itself, uh, in the Council, but also at the member states' levels. Okay? So we, we try and do that. And today, what I'm going to show to you and, and present is um, work we're doing on policies. It's an ongoing project, so we are still finalizing data collection now, uh, interviewing uh, member states, I'll tell you in a minute. So please um, understand that I'm only giving you provisional results and provisional analysis. There's a lot of analysis still pending to be done and discussions before we actually release the data and have a publication as we normally have towards the end of our research, okay? Right, so everybody knows that um, uh, open education is, is in the European agenda somehow, whether it's uh, in the Council recommendation, the first one in 2012, and then in the following year, in 2013, uh, with the opening up education communication. And from there, many different actions and activities towards open education have been developed by the Commission, and these research projects are also part of them, right? Part of, um, the goal is to support these uh, policy documents. Ah. So, so, quick question then. Does anyone want to say anything about open education? Do you have any strong views, very quickly? What's open education for you? One minute. Yes. Sharing. Sharing, okay. Anything else? Access, Access to education. Flexible, time. no time, no restrictions, yeah. opinions. opinions, okay. Adapted to the learning, okay. Free, 
Fantastic. Okay, so we have an overview, right? Why am I asking this question? Because we've been asking this question for a few years now, and we always have different answers from different people. We know that there is no single definition for open education, okay? Some people will focus on open educational resources, and most of the things that you said are also linked to that. Free, accessible, etc. But there is another side to open education, which is about collaboration, recognition, open practices, etc., that may not be directly related to open educational resources and licenses, but are still practices that uh, mean opening up, opening up the education process. So many people will have different perspectives on that. All of this is open education. This is the conclusion that we got because we know that open education is not something new. Sometimes you talk about it as if it was a new term, very fashionable, very trendy, but it dates from the 70s, and we should not lose track of that, right? On the 70s, it meant a more flexibility in pedagogies in the classroom, you know, and over time, the process, uh, uh, the terminology has been evolving. And nowadays, what we call at the Commission contemporary open education, the understanding of open education in the contemporary world is one that has to do with the use of digital technologies, okay? To enable everything that we're talking about, facilitating sharing, more free access, open access, etc., etc. So that's the main difference, but we should not forget that it's not something new. Why am I saying that? I'm saying that because um, that there is something that I'll tell you later. It's about the degrees of openness. We'll come back to that. So, by interviewing many people, over uh, 40 experts, and engaging with them online, etc., we came up with a working definition of open education for our project, because we thought what we need in Europe, at least, because I think the US have their views, and it's fine, um, is, a, is a, a common or a shared understanding of open education in order to be able to collaborate, to create policies, to move forward in this field. And this is why we have this working definition which is broad enough to encompass all these that you've mentioned, you know, open resources, content, accessibility, knowledge, sharing, etc. So we call it an umbrella term. An umbrella term that all that you've mentioned can be accommodated under it, okay? Right, um, degrees of openness. Oh, I didn't put it in the... Sorry. Um, how do I go in the presentation mode here? Here? Gosh, I don't see it. Oh, it's light show. Sure. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize that. Uh, Oh, I don't know, I, I use a different uh, interface. Okay, um, when I walked in, the, the presentation was there and I didn't realize. Degrees of openness, something else about the discussion of open education that we sometimes forget to take into account is that there are different levels to openness, no? You can have, um, no, I'm not only talking about licenses, within licenses as well, you can have a license that give you fewer permissions to reuse and rework the content. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a problem, Josie. <laughs> Don't worry, thanks. Uh, it's just that I lost all my uh, animation. <laughs> but that's all. Not a problem, thanks. Um, and, and then in terms of licenses, you can have a license that is more permissive, right? I'll wait for this because I can see your attention going totally to the technology. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and. Um, and so, this is all degrees of openness about licenses, but if we, if we have in mind that broader definition of open education, in which OER is embedded, right, but there is a lot more going on, we can also see different degrees of openness. You can be open as to content, but also as to technologies, if you use open source. At, leadership, at the leadership level, you can have like a transparency type of approach to leadership and openness in that sense. Uh, you can think of collaborating and you can be more open to collaborate and interchange. So there are different degrees. And when we're talking about open education, we need to be clear 
as to what we are talking about exactly, because otherwise it's very difficult to reach conclusions and to have a common understanding. And I've, I see it happening all the time. It's been happening in this conference, it happens almost everywhere I go and watch experts debating open education. Because each one of us will come with our own understanding in our point of view. And if we don't make it clear as to what we are talking about and what level of openness we're talking about, it's very difficult to reach a common understanding and go forward, okay? So I'm, I'm telling you this uh, because I feel that this is something we should talk more about. Okay, now very briefly, I will um, just uh, go through the Open Edu project because it's the backbone for the current work we are done, uh, doing on policies. Uh, it started in 2013. It's a research project that, it, that uh, deals with both qualitative and quantitative data collection with um, different stakeholders. It's focusing on higher education our main audience for this project was universities across Europe okay, and, uh, and experts, you know, people that are, have been doing open education, uh, both at the practice level, lecturers, but also at the management level of universities. Okay? So we've interviewed rectors, um, uh, deans, faculty deans, and also uh, lecturers, and in some cases, even students of MOOCs. Okay? And they collect data, we've collected data from different perspectives, Cases. The Open Credit one is in yellow if you're interested in recognition of learning, you could have a look at that one. Um, a survey uh, on practices and we consulted more than 90 stakeholders and we came up with the Open Edu framework that uh, most of you, I believe, have already seen, which looks at open education within this 10 dimensions perspective. And also to say that all these dimensions, they interrelate to one another. They very rarely are <laughs> going to work on their own, okay? And you're going to ask me, Andrea, why is OER? <laughs> why are you not? You're talking about open education, why is OER? In the content dimension. Um, but also, you know, it, we could be talking about OER if you think that research that is made, of, made, made available uh, in open access format could also be an open education resource. Then OER is also in research. Um, where is MOOCs in there? Everywhere. Because to have a MOOC, you need a strategy. Um, you need to have some pedagogy to create the MOOC. Uh, you need recognition, or simply to say there is no recognition, but you, you think about that. Uh, you're increasing access. You know, you can use a MOOC to research your student population. So this is a different perspective, but all these terminologies that keep using OER, MOOCs, etc., to us, they are there, you know, as tools that you can use in different ways to foster access, to foster openness as to content, to foster openness as to recognition, so on and so forth. They are not the end in itself, okay? They are more of tools, let's say. And the, um, the dimensions outside, strategy, technology, leadership and quality, we call them the transversal dimensions. The first one is the core, the other one transversal. So you need those four to make everything happen together. So they are always working together, okay? Okay, I have a few more minutes. So just to say, we've published that. It's available in this report, Opening Up Education. In there, you have um, a brief summary of all these research studies that I showed you before in the other diagram. You have also a, a definition for each of those dimensions that I presented. That is just the visual representation, okay? And then if you go to the, to the report, you'll find the definition, the rationale as to why they are presented, the way they are presented, the components, and you also have the descriptors because our main idea there was to help universities to think more strategically about how to open up education. And so we came up through our research with more than 150 descriptors within each dimension. For example, in the content dimension that is about OVR, actions, descriptors here, I mean actions that you can be doing, that a university can be doing if they decided to go open in terms of content. The same for pedagogy, lots of, a series of actions that you can tick, tick the box or not, because you don't want to do that. I think the idea is this framework is to be a kind of, a, it's not a benchmark, but a self-assessment tool and a, also a tool to help create strategies. Let's put it this way. Um, it, it can be modified, it can be adapted, okay? It's not prescriptive in any way, but it, it works as a tool for strategy making for universities mostly. So 
So I invite you to take a look at that. If anyone would like to try that or pilot that, please let us know, okay? Because we are willing to support that as well. Okay, now the policy work. We've got five minutes or a bit less. Okay, uh, so as I said, it's an ongoing project. So now you're moving from the institutional level to the national level. Now you're talking about open education policies at a member state level. We are 28 EU member states to date, and, and those are the ones that we talked to. So we interviewed the 28 ministries um, or representatives, like uh, in Belgium, we spoke to, to, to the Flemish ministry. It's very complex when you get to this level in education in Europe, no? And also to find the right people. It's focusing on higher education, but um, a few times we had to talk to people of basic education also, okay? But the main focus is on higher education. And we've, we've been writing, we're finalizing the process of writing the case studies for all these countries. And we asked them, do you have any policies for open education? If yes, please tell us about it. What's the rationale for it? If not, why not? And, and what are the challenges? What are the barriers? What are the successes? You know, can you tell us about it? So we really entered into a, a nice conversation with the ministries to see uh, what they're thinking, what their plans are, etc. And again, we came across this question. I hope you have answered that on, quiz show on Twitter. What is a policy? In the previous project, we asked the university, they would say, oh, it's a project, we have EU funding, we have a policy on open education, we have an EU project. Well, that's, that has a deadline to end, you know, what's the longevity of that? Is that really an institutional strategy of your university, of your higher education institution, or just a, an isolated action of your department, of a, of a professor that is really interested in the, in the theme? So this is the sort of things that we started to, to, to discuss. You know, what is the strategy? Can we talk about bigger strategies that will support top-down and bottom-up actions? I think that was the main idea. When we come to the ministries, the same. Uh, but then they understand, obviously, that they can only go so far, you know? <laughs> it's hard for them to be prescriptive because uh, universities are autonomous, perhaps a bit easier on basic school uh, level. Um, but there are things that can be done, and they started identifying some of those things, which is nice. So, for example, we identified four types of policies, mostly when you, when you ask about it. Um, so we have open, uh, policies at a national level that are specific on open education, such as the case of France that Catherine has just presented to us. That's a national level policy. Uh, we have Slovenia with the opening up Slovenia uh, policy. Okay, we have Germany that is now mainstreaming OER and has a lot of government funding for that, to do that at a national level. And then we have those countries that say, look, yes, we do have actions and interest in open education, but we do not have a policy specific on open education. The policy is embedded in our ICT strategy. Sometimes they call it digitalization strategy, something related to technology. And it's in there, okay, in those cases, uh, what happens is that very often the policy is not really specific, you know, there is a mention to open education, it's more broad, and it's not really specific, saying, okay, these are the goals, these are, this is the strategy, the national strategy behind it. In other cases, we have uh, countries that have educational strategies, not necessarily related to ICT, but something even bigger, this is our country's educational strategy, and then there is some sort of element to open education, and finally, the ones who have something mentioned in the open government plan, okay? And then the ones that do not have explicitly anything. This is just a sample, okay, out of the 28, just for you to have a look at. Okay, three minutes. So what we did is, when we started analyzing these policies, we started to cross them over the open edu framework with the 10 dimensions. Remember that uh, diagram that I showed you? So here we have the policy name, the country, and the 10 dimensions, and we started to see uh, to, um, the relationship of the policy to each of these dimensions. And you can see clearly that most countries are focusing on access and content. Content meaning open educational resources, as we all know, right? Opening up access, uh, some of them in ped pedagogy, but in recognition, the list goes on. It doesn't stop here. In, so far, there's known. So that's an area of open education that we could be thinking more about and actually acting, you know? Uh, having some plan for how we take it forward. 
uh, within the list so far, we have two countries that have um, actions on recognition. Lithuania is one of them, by the way. So I think this is just to give you an overview of, of uh, when you think of policies, the things that we could be thinking about and, and being more strategic when we are creating policies. Okay, now, um, I have... Many more, I will try and go quickly. There are barriers, so um, some countries will say, we have a very bu bureaucratic process here within the ministry. It's very difficult to change documents, to propose. We are working on it. We hope to do it, okay? Now, fragmentation of initi initiatives. Sometimes universities start things at different times with different goals, and then harmonizing everything is really hard for them. So if they're thinking of the effort of the universities, they always take this into account. You know, how much it's going to cost the universities to catch up with whatever it is that they're offering or proposing. And lack of institutional support. They say quite often the institutions themselves uh, um, do not provide enough support for the educators to, to um, go along with the policy we propose. Now, enablers, they say, whenever uh, uh, there is a clear policy priority to open education, that helps. And it's obvious, you know, whenever you know where you want to go, what you want to achieve, it makes the path much simpler. Or not necessarily simpler, but at least clear, you know? Then awareness raising. Uh, when you have awareness raising, capacity building, I think Joseph will probably talk about it later, that's also another enabler. So it's a conversation between the ministries and the universities, right? And finally, when you have grassroots communities, you know, examples of, uh, of educators doing it, and then they use that to create the policies. We have that type of, that type of conversation. So, just to finish, draft recommendations. We have recommendations from, uh, from this research. They are draft, we haven't really finalized. These come from the member states themselves. It's not me saying, okay? The member states said. We think that they, you should promote more. Be, uh, you know, do more about where awareness raising, about open education, etc. We think the EU or the European Commission should provide means to share agendas and its strategies. Uh, so we could share our policies, we could share our advancements on open education and work with one another at a higher level. And also provide multilingual <laughs> resources, because in some countries not everyone uh, uh, deals with English you know, in, a, in a very um, uh, easy way. It can be more complex depending on where you're coming from. So that's another, another aspect. And then to member states. From the member states to themselves, let's say. We should uh, make our strategies more visible to the EU so they can make, uh, help us better to develop what we are already doing. We need a common framework. That's a bit tricky, but we need a common framework to, to uh, procurement of educational resources and textbooks across Europe that are funded with public money and the EU money so that we make sure that they are available. And they should realize that digital skills are needed for the open education world. world. So, I will skip that one because we can talk about it later. In terms of dig digital competence, we, are, we also have uh, some research on digital competences, dig DigComp 2.0. And I would like to finish with this thought. Where there is a policy, there must be guidance and support to stakeholders. Okay? That facilitates policy implementation. Thank you very much.